everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk World Talk Show presented by Clickaway Creators. Today, we have Mr. Anupam Prasad with us. He began his career with Nishit Desai Associates, a tier one Indian law firm in Bangalore in 2006 as an associate and was also a part of corporate commercial law team, advising and assisting clients on m and venture capital investments, employment laws, and general corporate advisory work. In February 2020, he founded AP Law Chambers with like-minded professionals with past experience of working in leading law firms such as Khetan & Co, Cyril Amarchand, Shardul Amarchand, Vesh Associates with offices in Mumbai, New Delhi, Hyderabad, and Singapore. And I would like to introduce him first and you know, so that he can take this forward and uh, I would really like him to tell his journey as a legal professional so far. Hello, Anupam. How are you? Hi, hi. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Pleasure is all ours, uh, Mr. Anupam. So, uh, as I said, we are really excited to know about your legal, uh, you know, journey, uh, how it has been as a professional. Sure. Again, I, as you mentioned, it was in the year 2006 that I graduated from NUJS Calcutta, which is one of the leading law schools of the country. Um, and we were just a second batch. So there was a lot of onus on us how we sort of uh, pave the way for the university going ahead as being an alumni also. Uh, so being placed with Nishit Desai Associates in 2006 as a fresher as part of the corporate and commercial laws team. Uh, obviously as a fresher, you're still kind of figuring it out what is expected of you and you let the seniors sort of, you know, show you the way and this is what you need to do. Of course, as a fresher, you do have certain advantages of getting certain leeway, even if you make mistakes, but obviously the, the you know, the, the rope runs out pretty soon, not perhaps beyond six months of time as one would understand. But uh, in fact, we were very encouraged, especially in the beginning of our careers to sort of uh, partake in various areas of law, which when I look back in hindsight, since it's been about 15 years since I uh, joined uh, Nishit Desai Associates, uh, since then uh, being encouraged to partake in various practices of law, uh, it was good in a sense that you got to know what other uh, sector of law also provided for. Although we are part of corporate and commercial law team, we had sort of uh, dabbled with employment laws, even litigation, information technology laws, so on and so forth. Which, of course, you know, in an M&A transaction, for instance, you don't only have say one area of law. They are sort of flavors of everything else. You're doing, dealing with employees. If it's a tech company, then technology and so on and so forth. And as we move ahead, obviously, technology is becoming significantly important, irrespective of the sector that you are in. And uh, so that was in Bangalore until 2010, I was there. And thereafter, I moved to Khetan and Company. Okay, in fact, I was hired in the infrastructure practice, which is something new for me. And in, uh, I, in fact, I told them my earlier law firm did not really have an infrastructure practice. Are you sure for this hire? I said, no, it's okay. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, the basis of law remains the same in terms of the Contracts Act, transfer property, and so on and so forth. So, and for me, it was more to think of, you know, maybe it's a new practice area, which I may perhaps enjoy it more than what I was already doing. It's not that I was enjoying what I was not, I was not enjoying what I was doing earlier, but I thought, yes, why not? Let's try something new. So that uh, I was part of the infra team for about two years, and then internally I moved to the corporate and securities law team in terms of something which I was doing earlier also. And uh, then I was at Khetan and company for about three and a half years. And thereafter, I wanted to take a break because uh, work-wise, things were very hectic, in fact. So I thought, okay, it's been seven years. Let me take some breather if required, <laughs> because my schedule was office, home, home, office. That's about it during those times. Um, I decided to take a break, but it's, that's when I had some time to catch up with, uh, say, non-lawyers or my friends, you know, whom we would just perhaps exchange messages and talk. Uh, and then they got to know you're a lawyer. We knew you're a lawyer, but we didn't know what you did. And I say, okay, you, you help companies and so on and so forth. We have startups, we have our own ventures. Why don't you uh, help us out? I mean, that was pretty exciting because you kind of, at that moment, you're in a freelancing stage and you're getting paid for it also. So it's nothing like, you know, earning your own bucks, right? <laughs> and thereafter, of course, one of my friends, he had his own startup law firm and he reached out that why don't you, you're anywhere working. So why don't you get into an organizational setup? Which of course made a lot of sense then. And then I was this uh, part of, a startup law firm, uh, which was started by a friend of mine from college. It was called RDA Legal. And uh, I was there for about uh, almost three years. And I was taking care of the Mumbai operations. And of course, 
this was my first sort of uh, initiation into the entrepreneurial side of things also because uh, you're not only uh, uh, working on the legal side of things but also on the business side of things because you're running an office right so there are a lot of administrative stuff business decisions that one needs to take in addition of client delivery so so that was something new but exciting at the same time i mean we of course it was a lot of learning for us being a startup a uh, law firm you're responsible for the salaries the hiring and so on and so forth which earlier of course was taken care of by somebody else uh, so that was a good experience um, and i spent about 3 years in that role and with my team on around april 2016 i moved to uh, another law firm called indus law in mumbai itself and i joined there as a partner of course and uh, i was taking care of uh, the corporate and commercial law practice again of course you are in a larger setup things are work in a different framework and each organization has its own do's and don'ts and of course the expectations also in terms of getting clients and so on and so forth so as of january last year uh, i was a partner with indus law and thereafter i decided that maybe it's time that i do i did something of my own and that's what you see me today in form of ap law chambers so in a nutshell uh, that's sort of has been my 15 year journey so far wonderful so uh, i mean uh, the way you are talking about it uh, what i feel is that you have you have still not lost passion in law which i mean you know these days you know how people lose interest in in whatever they are pursuing but uh, mo- moving on uh, we would really love to know about your most memorable case and uh, maybe you know some of the key takeaways from there sure i mean it's a, a difficult question in the sense that when <laughs> we work on various matters it's unfair to pinpoint one of them of course there are some transactions that we are involved in they have their own set of challenges but at the same time they have their own set of learnings also which sort of hold you good for the long term to come so i i remember i mean while i was an issue this year associates of the transaction which we had hoped would get over based on our, our past, the firm's past experience maybe 6 to 7 months but it went down for almost 2 years and when it it did close thankfully because a lot of times what happens is a lot of these transactions just fall off the cliff and for whatever reason do not close for valuation or the change in promoter's mindset and so forth, so on and so forth but it'll be interesting to note like recently in my current role and especially since the past few months have been pretty challenging uh, in light of the current pandemic and the covid situation panning out a lot of deals uh, while we are a small setup we did manage to get uh, a bunch of transactions uh, which is good considering it was a difficult year and one of the transaction in fact was sort of falling off because of the the investors thought in change of valuation and what they had thought would not work out because nobody had thought that they would be locked down for so many months and businesses would suffer uh but it was in, uh, it was interesting and it was important that the promoter salvage the deal so in fact we have kind of proposed that why don't you whatever investments that you're planning to make you break it into tranches and put certain conditions uh in relation to the subsequent uh, um, tranche that you would make so that helped uh, to salvage the deal of course the valuation was sort of uh, took a beating to a, uh, to a slight uh, level but having said that i mean the company needed some cash right to operate you need that so that happened so that was good uh, uh, to see especially for a form of our size that we could kind of orchestrate that and uh, and uh, have built a case uh, in in that uh, transaction that we had all right great uh i just got into the zone sorry <laughs> uh so uh, mr anupam uh, how do you look at corporate law and commercial laws in 2021 and how do you think it's going to change maybe five years down the line i oh, see i think uh, i always say i mean it's it's a very cliched way of stating it you know law is so dynamic that it's always changing and especially when we we talk to our clients in the tech side we always say you know law takes time to catch up and technology is obviously moving ahead but having said that of course you know every year especially during this time of the year when there's a budget past uh, there are a lot of uh, changes that are introduced to the legal system also in terms of the law in fact um, if you recollect recently in the in the in the budget that was announced uh, by the honorable finance minister there was a proposal to introduce something called the securities code now of course we did have the laws like the sebi act depository act and you know the uh, securities contract regulation act so on and so forth uh, which is now proposed to be subsumed into something called the securities code 
Now that makes a lot of sense firstly, because the regulator for all of this remains SEBI. And at times, if you look historically also, and from the case laws as well, there have been a lot of issues that have been overlapping in nature. So when you look at multiple laws, now that when you have one law, it sort of perhaps it will ease out those issues and even help uh, uh, not to have those issues being litigated upon because now you're looking at one set of laws. Similarly, I mean, not necessarily in the commercial law space, but again, uh, we, labor laws also we are an important aspect of it. So now we may, uh, the, they, uh, there are four labor codes that are passed recently. Of course, they've not come into effect un unless they are sort of published in the official gazette by the government. So these labor codes, which are four in nature, have sort of replaced more than almost 30 uh, legislations. So that sort of, again, brings everything, uh, you know, codifies a lot of things which are all over the place and does help. And perhaps it will help, especially uh, labor compliance have always been a sticky subject because it's also a state subject and states also have a right to legislate on. Uh, similarly, I'm sure a lot of, uh, I think, developments would take place. I, I would not call it dispute resolution, but uh, it, it's an offshoot of ADR, that is alternate dispute resolution in terms of uh, mediation would form uh, would form its prominence. Um, recently, there was this Consumer Protection Act, which was overhauled completely, which provides for mediation also as a recourse. Similarly, sometime back, we had the Commercial Court Act, which also provides for mediation. So mediation is a sort of a pre-court procedure driven by the parties themselves that they agree to uh, they get a mediator appointed and they the mediator sort of doesn't act as a judge or arbitrator but tries to get the parties to settle in in the base best case scenario so that it's a win-win situation because the litigation has its own banes in terms of the time required the cost so on and so forth and you may not get a remedy so perhaps mediation could be considered as an alternative to you know the standard uh, legal proceedings that we have so i think all in all there are a lot of changes across the sex spectrum that we are expecting and we are seeing and which is uh, the order uh, in which it is going to flow as we move ahead. Uh, so yeah, so I think that's all I have to mention about changes in law and I'm sure we will see many more as we uh, move along. Yeah. For sure. All right. Uh, so uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, in the light of the current pandemic, how did you manage your law firm, especially just before the lockdown that you formally started operating as AP Law Chambers? Must be very difficult. In fact, I wish uh, nobody would have guessed that there's a lockdown coming. In fact, <laughs> it started around March. And uh, I think uh, in Mumbai, in Maharashtra, the lockdown was called a few days earlier. I believe it was, I remember 17th March and national lockdown was from 22nd March onwards. So while we did not see it coming, but it was too late to sort of uh, go back into something else or have a plan B really. And to even when you are sort of thinking of starting something of your own, the homework begins much before that. Uh, I would say, uh, I always believe there's somebody up there watching all of us, right? You know, <laughs> so uh, that way when we, I sort of left uh, January being my last month in my last organization, some of the clients moved along with me. So the, that kind of helped me to hit the ground running and ensure I keep uh, raising my invoices and ensure my AMIs and my you know bills are paid. Uh, so so that way it was good. And in fact, since then uh, we have had a number of new clients. Uh, and as we speak, also we are in discussions on at least three or four transactions. I would not say they are major, but anything small is not bad for a firm of our size. And uh, and 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 the best part of it is. These have not these uh, opportunities or the requirements that have come is through referrals and people have no who have known me from the past. It's never been a cold call from anywhere that you know we are a company or we are an investor looking for something. So I think uh, therefore this year we think there's a lot more we can do considering all of this what we have achieved so far has happened more through referrals and friends and family and so on and so forth. So so that that way as I said we have been pretty lucky and blessed i would think i hope that stays the same way for you mr prasad and mm -hmm. uh, uh, lastly uh, as uh, you know it's it will be one year for your uh, you know uh, own firm so what advice would you give to any uh, fellow lawyers who may be thinking of starting you know starting off on their own well, I think it's a lot of people consider this as a brave decision, you know, whenever, even when I did that, it's saying, okay, I mean, that that's, that's a big call to take. And, you know, especially when you are short of your monthly 
salary or whatever hitting your account and there's no certainty towards that but i always believe law as a profession you know it is more entrepreneurial driven right because even if you look at several litigating lawyers and all they're pretty much on their own so i would believe whenever whichever part of life a lawyer should certainly try doing this by themselves also however long the tenure may be whether it's for short term mid term or long term you need to experience it to feel the adrenaline rush of course there's a lot of stress also that comes with it because uh, everything begins and ends with you you know there's nobody in fact people ask us when you have uh, a question or uh, you know uh, an area of law which you don't have answers to what do you do i said no we talk to our seniors i talk to my former bosses whoever else and we do, nobody can claim that we know it all right so we also need to read up and in this profession particularly you need to be reading continuously because positions of law is changing and each state may have different uh sort of uh you know uh, high courts may have different views and all of that so yeah it's very important that we kind of keep ourselves up to date with uh, what's what's relevant so coming back to your question i think any time is the right time of course you need to ensure that you have built some kind of uh, clientele or rapo that should uh, you know you need to reach out to somebody tomorrow or they need some help you should be in a position to do that and one should do the homework well also and i believe the pie is huge i mean whether you are the largest firm in the country to the smallest one there's enough work it's where you want to benchmark yourself that is really relevant right so i think yeah i think i always tell any anybody ask me what, what when is it the right time to do it i would say now now is the right time whenever that your now is you know <laughs> so that's all i would like to suggest yeah so uh, i would just like to add one thing uh, when you were saying that the right time is now so uh time is always always right for the things which are right yes. right so uh, on that note uh thank you so much uh anupam for uh, sharing such wonderful insights with us and i'm sure this uh, interview again would help uh people and yes it's not taken uh, it should not be taken as a challenge uh but it is kind of a risk uh so would you like to add something uh to to this if if you don't mind sure i mean i think anything has risk right even the current work you are doing the transaction the matter you are ha- handling if not done well there's a element of risk and at the end of the day you're dealing with various people also some people may be kind some may not be somebody wants it uh, as soon as possible so there are various permutation and combinations to it so risk is anyway i tell even people even if you're crossing the road there's a risk right you don't know something may just come out of the blue so i think yes one has to be a little pragmatic one cannot be stupid about things everything yeah. has to be thought through when in doubt ask your peers ask your seniors ask your contemporaries and so on and so forth so even when i did whatever i you know i've done so far there has been a thought process it's not that a lot of people believe okay maybe he comes from the pedigree or legacy and you know he can afford to do such a thing i said no we are from a typical middle class background and uh, we have sort of learned and earned things by ourselves you know there's no silver spoon anywhere <laughs> in the picture or anything else but as i said you know higher the risk higher the reward so until you don't seek you don't get right so it's very easy to just sit and discuss say, oh i don't like this i don't like that i wish i, I had something of my own and things like that i said nobody stopping you you know we are a free country at the end of the day right so <laughs> please go ahead it's not going to be easy you know we're going to have all the support systems and all of that which are at your beck and call in a setup right uh, at times uh, you may have to do things yourself like when i started off somebody reached out to me to send a legal notice i was all by myself frankly uh, I, in fact uh, i had to draft it get the print out i went to the post office myself to get the speed post done then i went to the private courier office also to get it done so yes it was a half day job but but it's okay i mean earlier you had your you know office boys to just tell them boss do this and do that but it, it's okay i mean we were always told even if from day one you know you ought to know even how to put in the paper and the printer if the need comes to because our job requires us to work at times pretty late and almost at times even the entire night so at times you may not have help at your disposal so you can't let the show has to go on as they say right so yes i think you have to be prepared for all of it and uh, nothing comes e- nothing comes easy but yes harder you work the luckier you get as it is said so yeah i think that that's the bottom line and there are perks to working on your own you don't have anyone to report to uh, you can decide when you want to work you don't want to work like i have a friend who i generally he's got his own setup 
So I ask him, how do, how do you operate and how does it do? He tells me, boss, once I make X amount of money in a month, I start chilling because I know I have covered ground for the next few months. So it's how you, what you want to do of it. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, that, there's no formula really. And it all depends on what you want. Some people are happy with X. Some people are happy with, not happy with whatever you get. So you need to draw the line. And uh, as, as I said, there's opportunities to everyone. You just need to go out and just show your face around. Be sincere. As I said, you know, don't try to fool people. I mean, there are people much smarter than you out there as well. So just be sincere. And I always tell people, you can lie to the world, you can't lie to yourself. So that accountability has to start with. And I'm sure everything will fall into place there are. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've answered your question correctly, but- Absolutely. So just and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm really sorry, I added on to the questions and you know, I, uh, I was just curious. Uh, so that if uh, our audiences, I'm, I'm sure these are, these are the kind of questions which will drop in the comments. Right. So I just wanted to give them an insight about this as well. So thank you so much yet again uh, for sharing uh, some, you know, uh, some of your experience and again, insights with us. We really look forward to having a chat with you again uh, in the future on maybe some other training topics in the international legal industry. And for our viewers, uh, if you like this chat with Mr. Anupam, please like and share this video and also subscribe to Click Away Creators YouTube channel to appreciate what we do and you have more coming from industry legal leaders. Thank you so much. This is Bharti for Lex Talk signing off. Bye-bye. Take care.